No. <laughs> for that, I have a logical answer for once. <laughs> you need to do it not only on your own, but you need other people for it. Today's visit is in the studio of Vilma Pimenov, who is a Helsinki-based artist who does photography. And you can tell us a bit more about yourself. Yes, thank you. And thank you for inviting me. Um, so, uh, yes, I'm a photographic artist. Um, my practice also kind of widens a little bit uh, into moving image uh, and some, uh, I would say, sculpture or ready-made or objects, I guess. Um, I'm currently uh, working on an animation that now I think that uh, hopefully it's going to be an animation but uh, or a mixture of things but uh, something a little bit different from from just still images so yeah so I'm a, uh, my background is in is in photography but uh, I also do sort of work with other mediums as well did you always work with other mediums or uh, did you do still images for a while and then moved to other Stuff. Yes, that's definitely my, like, the photography is my background with my own art practice. I do have the photography as in, um, as a profession. So that's always, I guess, the, uh, how many times I can say photography in one sentence, but photography is always like in the, in the core of the, or, or my practice. Many people kind of act, uh, go towards photography or use it because of this, because it's the real, because it's, it's not like drawing or it's not like painting it's it's it shows like the the real real world but uh i guess that's now the why i'm still continuing with photography is because i'm interested in the exactly exactly in the kind of the falseness of its kind of the reality what it re records as in like the like the trickery of photography like how you can how we can make through photography we can make things look like other things. Uh, a theme that still interests me a lot is that, well, perception overall, like, and how we understand uh, what we see and how, like, how vision works. When we grow up, we understand, we, we, we recognize things, we learn how to recognize and kind of label and understand stand things through, through, the, through culture and through um, different sort of norms and then we are kind of creating the world through through our vision and how we've learned things and then somehow the, the world is still unfolding as it is I don't know I'm just all that all that is very interesting to me I guess yeah I mean uh, I'm totally with you on that curiosity boat yeah <laughs> <laughs> I like that because I, I have also nice been little boat we have here <laughs> I've also been very uh, fascinated by those uh, by those things, and yeah. not only just reading how it works, the whole apparatus, but many things that I could say about it as well. But it's like this this theme that uh, interests me is like where also one one particular aspect aspect of this whole like how do we understand reality is like when when we we see something, when is the moment when we realize that something that we're looking at, for example, is alive or or when do we kind of when are we triggered to to kind of sense that somebody else is also looking at us and those kind of things like how sort of like if you're in a dark room then you know you start seeing kind of figures or lines and sort of like beings or uh, some some things that might be looking back at us it, it's more like from that kind of analytical point of view that I uh, tend to think about it now that not only like with the play uh, mm. that is also fun but to understand like how we are created like why why we pay attention to those things that we do pay attention to or what why do we like the things that we like those kind of questions are mm, that goes beyond vision already <laughs> yeah it does but it's very related to vision like very very related to vision yeah I'm, it's it's inevitable vision is uh, the most prevalent sense for those who can use it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It is true. But, yeah. But um, but also lately, something that um, something that uh, I find that it's m more and more of 
of interest to me is um, theater, puppet theater. What I really like about it is that it, there is, it can be very simple and yet it can tell the story in a very kind of, um, in a very entertaining and wise and like, you know, in a intelligent, witty way. I must say that um, a big influence for me ha has been in my, uh, even before I was like up, up until I was 15 um, in school, uh, I had I had really good art teachers and really inspiring also drama teacher who definitely were for me. I grew up in a small small town. Uh, they were a very big inspiration and very big um, sort of you know like a role model to mm. to to just a, you know an example of how you can also be you know, something else. Yeah, a teacher is very important in uh, one's life, especially. And, in and, and I, m I must say this now also because uh, because in this in this moment and in this political time here in Finland, uh, you know, I think that's also like something that like it, you know, when there's all these cuts to uh, two different budgets and all so forth, uh, this is something that I feel very strongly that we should not cut from from you know, culture or arts education, um, anywhere there. So, yeah, that's why I wanted to mention also that the early years of my career before 15 years old, <laughs> because that sets the basis also. Of course. Yeah. 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 And a, a teacher can make or break an interest in you. Definitely. But um, I did. Uh, so university I went to uh, in England and it was uh, fine art photography. Uh, but uh, a, a big part of it was also sociology. Uh, and I had a very good teachers also. Obviously, it was not all, you know, roses, but I, I have very good uh, memories of that, uh, of those years. And it was, uh, I, yeah, definitely people and lectures that I still have the notes from, from you know, my semiotics lectures. And I'm, uh, you know, and they were very, they, it was a very inspiring time. I also, and I went to work in France uh, and then also did, after a while I did the masters and moved back to England and went back and forth uh, a lot. Um, yeah, and then after the studies, I worked a lot uh, with different, assisting different photographers in the commercial uh, photography world. Um, yeah, and then slowly built my own identity as an artist, I guess. I, I took. Uh, that took for me kind of a long time because I also wanted to it was for me after the studies was very important to also you know earn my money and also somehow now I see it that it was also very important for me to be like assert that I can also in the photography world even though I'm I'm you know I'm a woman and uh, because I think there was some sometimes there has been like this you know, little biased of like, you know. How did you decide to go to France after England? I, it was very, I'm, for that, I have a logical answer for <laughs> once. <laughs> you know, I, it went, basically I was assisting, and this actually, I was assisting an artist photographer in England that summer, uh, a Canadian artist, and he, so I assisted him for the summer in, in London, and then he was going to Paris after. And then he said uh, that because I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what, you know, what I didn't really have a plan. And then he just mentioned that if I would like to to come to Paris, then he could uh, that I would I I would have work with him. And he had an agent also in Paris. So it was really good because then I got other other people and artists and photographers to assist through him. And that's how. Yeah. And then after some time, you came back to Finland. Yes, I came happen? back in now uh, 2016. I moved back to Finland. When you move a lot, it feels sometimes feels like you're never in the right place in this mm. in the right time, and it, you feel a little bit scattered. But then now I I I can see the the good things also, and I do go back sometimes. I mean now I'm going now. Uh, uh, it's a yeah residency, but still just spending a few months. Uh, in the beginning of next year in Paris. What have you been doing now lately? Good you mentioned, question. You mentioned the <laughs> animation. Of sorts. Yeah. Yes. And um, there's there's many subtitles and sub 
you know interest in there but it's basically about like uh, power and how how the how we can kind of visualize power basically for me what I'm talking about when I say power is like the relations between things and the relations between people like how how are things relate uh, in relation to one another uh, and then also maybe now lately this is very influenced influenced uh, by the, the the current situation, political situation here in Finland, uh, that I just I'm I'm constantly asking like okay we all we are aiming at the same thing, but we see we see it so differently like this whole like point of view uh, mm. difference you know how how people communicate with with each other and how we are in constant you know power relation with each other and now how I think. I think it should be talked more about like how we can, you know, how it could be, uh, how we could understand each other's points of views easier, and how we could how we could tell the story, the same story in a in a different way, like million times, so that mm. we could have like a rounder vision of the of the topic. The story stays the same, but then it's the kind of narrator that changes. Here's one image of a man, David. Here, hello, David. Also another man here, uh, I think he's, uh, somebody else knows much more who exactly he is. Maybe Superman, maybe somebody else. Because of this this topic, the one thing that manifests uh, this, this power uh, is this kind of, you know, figure of a man. And then I find it fascinating to know that at the same time, you know, you have this potential and power and viril virility and then uh, and then yet at the same time it's really fragile. I have this collection, there's only like these these two guys here now, but different sort of bodies. Yeah, there's something interesting in them now uh, that I'm researching. And also because this, this guy has somehow, we can put him, okay, he's, he's missing arms now and like one of the foot, but uh, he, can, he can definitely make this David pose and looks quite, like the statue. So yeah, I photographed him. And then one thing with photography, which is a simple thing, but when you make something small, uh, take something small and make it make it big, enlarging it through photography, it might become something else. And then, um, yeah, also I have a collection of hands and other strange things. But again, oh, that's the same, same guy. Oh, the soldiers are... Also one one topic. That's a weightlifter guy. Yeah, there's a collection of this this, you know, men doing different things and being very uh, powerful but then fragile at the same time. And I also saw um, uh, this one piece of theater that they used the, these toy soldiers in different way as well. And it was really like it's such a good tool because mm. it's such a stereotype and a, like a symbol for you know mm. for this you know man and power and all that. Uh, you know these uh, these Harlequin you know books that you have for these images and you know and you have. Uh, they were very popular in Bulgaria in the nineties. Yeah, well, they're uh, here. I think there's like everywhere, uh, but. The thing is why I started collecting these because uh, because this because of these hands and because it's all about like this who possesses who and what happens and yeah the power to to do things and how you use your power over somebody for example or mm. in the name of love and all those kind of things so because you can do you you also if you ha if you have power then you have responsibility with it so I mean already that was very much like in the same topic that I'm still now but. Um, but yeah, so looking at different different imagery that then when you kind of go dig deeper in it and it, then it starts telling, you know, its story in a different way. Like I, I feel like there's so many topics, but also like very, so many topics in, in the society that we should just have more conversations about. Um, and so it's kind of like, the core of the whole piece is very like day to day. It's like this, you know, uh, like small talk, mm. or or big talk, whatever. But it's some. It can be kind of mundane issues or mundane um, situations, but something that uh, also touches things like human rights and are you know 
that, that how we equal, but basically this, um, uh, maybe we, you probably will cut this a lot because I go all directions now here. Or maybe <laughs> I'm going to keep it all like this. Uh, yeah, Let's but, <laughs> but I, I want to, I want to go to the core of like just, uh, the, so, so that the values of the people whose opinions are in that, uh, in that animation or in the script that I would include in the animation that kind of the values will, uh, be very clear and then the values will be contested by the other, uh, sort of by other people and discussed and not not kind of juxtaposed in a way that you mm. that that creates like kind of like this this wall or somehow like I the situation we are living in well, exactly Currently. that and i yeah and i think it's like i because before this i had like a uh, i i'm you know worked with in in photography and all that and i thought i i feel very steady with that and then somehow i had a a moment where I just felt like there's no this sounds very dramatic but sometimes it can feel very dramatic I just felt like it's all futile like I it doesn't it's not kind of important enough I wasn't really motivated to do uh, work on the perception for example or you know that we talked about before mm -hmm. that was like and still is my great interest but somehow it just it wasn't so urgent, you know. But how I how I would like to create the works now is that it has a value in like it's like at the same time it's entertaining somehow, so that you are you actually have a pleasure to like you know you know watch the piece or you know giving you the kind of insight that makes you yeah makes you think differently about your your own life. I mean, and in a mm. quite maybe more direct way rather than. Um, what I've done before. So what other themes would you say that you have in your practice apart from this current interest in power? Sorry, the, yeah, <laughs> well, the power is kind of like there's a lot of uh, yeah, sub, sub themes under that under that. But um, uh, I have started thinking that, OK, what is the relationship? Like, what is the imaginary in our heads, like in the very human mind? Like, what do we think? Who, like, who is the like who is the animal and how do we like all those kind of cultural projections on on nature so that's definitely one of the things that I've also simultaneously I'm thinking like what is the relationships body what is the relationship um, between like human and the and what we think is natural I wouldn't say nature but natural and what is the right thing uh, but I think I mean this was already like apparent in this 21st century still life series very much that I did, which is basically a series of uh, still life images, uh, they are photographs, and I constructed them uh, from these plastic sort of uh, tablecloths uh, that have fruit and, uh, and flowers printed on them, and then I make them, you know, as 3D, again, I kind of model them as these 2D tablecloths as if they were really, and then I re-photograph the whole thing. And so basically in the end, uh, you see an image that looks like this, uh, like kind of like an old still life painting. But then when you look closer, then you see that, oh, it's all like in plastic and it's kind of, it's mm. all false. And already in that, you know, there's like all these things, uh, themes inside of that series, you know, like what, so what is natural, what is beautiful, what do we, what is ideal, uh, yeah, or also I've had through that series, you know, like long conversations about like, you know, kind of Monsanto and like how to, you know, how to, what's the future of like things that, you know, plants and inevitably there's many themes in you know, in one mm, kind yeah, of work for sure. So something that stays kind of provides some kind of clarity or like a red thread or something that goes through all the works is somehow I always like many times the starting point is for my work is something um, like an object that 
that already exist or a picture that I then kind of start going around and, and re-photographing. I have this video piece, then, uh, the Eyes, Eyes, Baby, which where I, I am performing. I mentioned about the, the, the studies years ago and my notes from like semiotics uh, lectures. So sort of going back to always like still the same thing and thinking about this whole thing of like, you know, you looking at something and then you being aware of like other people also looking at you and all those like, you know, uh, dynamics of the gaze. I don't know how I just put it together with this. Uh, I think I've seen an image of this, you know, somebody painting the eyes on top of, you know, their their eyelids. And I just thought it was like, it looked really curious. Adding the the tutorial of like painting the eyes and that mm. as kind of like a fun remake of you know like because they're like the the, the makeup tutorials are like really serious like they're, they're not fun no. i mean fun <laughs> maybe for some but they're not funny you know they're like really like okay not on purpose funny. no yeah exactly <laughs> so i thought okay first anyway i can't be serious with this because it, you know i don't take myself seriously like that and then I just thought it was some, but I could get like the, that would be a good frame for me to like explain something to the viewer because. Yeah, especially when it's this uh, topic of the self and the self image. Yeah. And, and looking. How you see yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you want to go deeper into that, but it's a very interesting one because I think also like in art, you know, you have this, um, this whole conversation about like, okay, so I is it, is it, you know, at the end of the day, you know, like there's the, the artwork of the artist and there's the artist and uh, because of this also, because the art world can be like so commercialized or kind of, you know, some artist branded or something, then it's uh, sometimes, I, I feel a little bit irritated about this thing that, you know, uh, you know, somebody is interviewed because of their, what they do, their art, and then, you know, they don't actually show the art, but they, they just show the face of the artist, and I think it's not really relevant. I do think that it's m more interesting to concentrate on the on the piece rather than rather than the, the person who made it. What and have you been reading lately? That has been I, interesting. This is good. I need. It's all on my on my desk. I can I can give you the titles. Uh, we can but even show the the things. I I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? Okay, I, I talked about power, so there's very uh, lots of different books uh, on this. But there's okay, so this is in Finnish, but this is Kullervorainio Valta ja Vallan Käyttö. It's a very, uh, as it is, power and uh, the use of power. And it's uh, the so social mm, and psychological. Uh, investigation on power so very kind of from the social so sociological point of view but also kind of presenting you like very different situations and how what happens and characters and uh, mm. all that um, so power theory power theory but like uh, and this is from the 60s I think or 70s uh, yeah 68 so also the, the, the words, like the language is really kind of uh, uh, very interesting because it's also kind of like a manual, but then it's very, uh, yeah, very, it's official. very, very interesting book. And then from power, uh, to, we also have freedom, <laughs> which is like, uh, yeah, big words. But this is a great book as well. I also have it in Finnish because it's, um, uh, yeah, because it's good to have the, a certain vocabulary also in the in the language that what you mm. use sometimes also um, this is a great book uh, which is ohi kirjoituksia kuolemasta ja sen vierestä um, i guess you could translate it to pass and it's writings about death and loss but it's also very much about and these are essays by different people uh, edited by Carmen Balsar and Aurora Lemma but this is all very linked with this, with these other topics. So, um, yeah. And I then, and okay. then we have, because I, because I, I, I really like uh, Sarah Heinema's uh, articles and what she writes uh, in, that I've seen in like, in papers. And then I, I found uh, this 
this book that uh, is called Amerkitus, which is a meaning or a signification. <laughs> I was like, so basically it's, it's like the semiotics in, from one point of view, but also about like the, the meaning of things like this. Okay, Meaning of it, meaning. Meaning of meaning, which is like, okay, we're at the core of it now. So <laughs> now you understand where I'm like, okay, I've just Serious been reading. Stuff. Yeah. So there's the book, uh, image, image Music Text, but this is not, um, it's not the Roland Barthes, uh, but it's uh, kind of notes on image music text by Roland Barthes, um, by different writers also. And then there is Thinking Feminism in Art Practices, Katrin Aukrin and Olga Paolo. This is, uh, yeah, I just, these so are it's my in English, desk. It's by just Finnish uh, authors, but in English. Yeah. Yeah, have you have you read it? Do you know this? No. It's um. I think it's it's. Yeah, it like I recommend. Yes, and it's a. Ver I, I'm not sure actually. I think definitely it's in it's in. Yeah, it is in in, in English. It's in two languages here. Uh, it was a while ago, 2019, that this was published. Uh, yeah, and then a book on climate change by Miko Peltari here. So this is currently on, on the desk, but this is not also like in the, like on the, the, um, the meaning, the significance book. Uh, there's like three, three essays in, or three articles there that are kind of like, you know, what I'm interested in. So mm. it's not like, in, or not all of the book. It's kind of like you have to also, in the books, you have to find the stuff that is relevant to what you are looking for. Because it's a so. lot of words otherwise. Yeah, anyways, it's a lot of words. But also when you, you're, I mean, you can choose. It's easy when you know where you go, like what you are kind of looking for. Mm. But yeah, so this is just to uh, confuse us even more. <laughs> but I think it's, you know, you need, you need to kind of, uh, you, you need to go kind of wide, I think, to be able to also decide what, what is relevant for you and what is not, you know. Mm. Uh, but yeah. yeah, it is a lot of work. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> do you read? Uh, not as much as you do, uh, but I have found that audiobooks work a lot better for me. Mm. Because at some point, very early in my life, after I discovered the internet, uh, my patience went significantly down. Mm. So uh, yeah, audiobooks work for me. I listen. Yeah, no, and podcasts and things online, you know, that are kind of yeah, uh, yeah, more. They can be more of the how would you say, like kind of more current because they are quicker, more quickly produced than the printed. Uh, mm. Well, words. of course, sometimes it's better to just sit down, and take your time. Mm. But yeah, why well, I I end up kind of having and reading books is because I don't have the patience for the internet. Like I I. You know, my eyes just start flickering. I can't <laughs> read things like screen is like limited time for me. I, I find it much more easier to concentrate with a book rather than with something yeah. that is on screen. Yeah, well, different heads, different, different ways. Different heads, different ways, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But I do use, I use Instagram. I, I also kind of, yeah, I use, I, I, I use my screen time. I have that, <laughs> you know. I, mean, I feel like if, if you're an artist, you, you just have to use Instagram. It, it's how, how do you go around it? I mean, of course, there are artists in this world who don't, but I somehow feel that it's, a, it's, it's almost a must. Yeah, I, I haven't been active as in like, I, I haven't posted anything for a long time uh, as in, because I've heard that in from that perspective, like oh, Instagram is very important because you need to be kind of you know, sort of promoting yourself. So definitely, uh, I'm doing that very badly because I'm doing it at the moment because uh, I want to concentrate on making the work and not being just yeah. It's it's seen. like another job in itself, only promoting yeah. your own work. But I do. I mean, for that, uh, that seeing what's happening around you, it mm. is a very good tool. Uh, but I guess it's. Um, I haven't been doing it so much, but 
um, there's some very uh, intelligent friends of mine who told me who are telling me that you should curate your Instagram uh, better so that you would actually have more interesting content coming at you in a way so that you would you know kind of work the algorithm mm. so that it would give you more the kind of stuff that you actually want and not um, not but then it so we, we go back again to the, the you looking and stuff when stuff looking at you and, uh, yeah I know it's, it's like this uh, instant like you know this are you, are you are you playing the algorithm or <laughs> are you feeding it and and then it's playing you afterwards no back. and I think yeah. we always lose like you know, even if you want to play the algorithm it's like because it's because the volumes are just so massive that you can't really like if there's yeah you're a drop you can't of really there. Mm, you can't really uh, steer it not too much and then the moment you feel like you're steering it, they change. So, so you can't. <laughs> it is a, it's a game, definitely a game. Yeah, somebody uh, actually gave me feedback at some point about the podcast and the questions that I should ask people about the, the, the significance of social media in, mm. of the, in their work and stuff. So, yeah, this is a good, good reminder. Topic. That, yeah. yeah. No, um, yeah, I, I guess when I mentioned that it's a it's a platform where you can market your work uh, and definitely can be used very well for that uh, is good. But um, at the moment, I'm not investing in that so much. Uh, probably will do a lot more when there's a the time for that. When I have things more like ready and the next exhibition and everything, then I will definitely use it for also for promotion. But but for now, um, I guess it's, um, I call it uh, uh, research, but it's more like, you know, uh, once you start scrolling, you can't stop kind of a thing. I, I mean, that's admit. the design of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you do, I don't know how to call it. Like, is it entertainment or is it uh, addiction or? It's a, it's what a is thin it? line. Mm. Yeah, I guess it depends on you what it becomes. Yeah, no. Or does it? I don't know. W would you say, uh, no, sorry, I'm busy educating myself through Instagram, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. Yeah. Although, although in a way you are, you know. Mm, but I know, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not straightforward. Not out of it, yeah. Should we talk a bit about the studio? Because this is something I emphasize on in every conversation. And sure. This, this is. Uh, one of the biggest studios I have been to. You said you share it with other people. Yes, we're in the we're here in Vallila. This is uh, Atelier Satyr in Finland. They're, they they have a lot. It's an organization. They have a lot of artist studios, and this is one of them. I share this space with other uh, photographers and and artists. I like that. I like sharing because then obviously you end up sharing the costs, but also you have kind of a community because mm. it can be a very solitary work. Um, and just having uh, a workplace where you come in the morning and you, you make the coffee and then you can have the coffee with your colleague is a great thing as opposed to not having anybody and even having your coffee alone. So <laughs> yeah, this... Um, How many people are you? We are six at the moment in this space but using it in very, very different ways. Have you had a studio by yourself before? No, never. I've always been in the shared spaces, also in London, uh, which is very... Because also I, I prefer to have like a bigger space and then, mm. you know, or, you know, kind of division in the biggest, bigger space. What is more, most important in the studio for you? Space. Empty space. space. Huh. I mean, definitely, we are able to breathe here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Also, in I mean, practically, or in practical uh, terms, what I mean by maybe the 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 empty space is because when you have an idea, then you have you you start building it, and you need the you need the empty space to be able to build something mm. that takes place in the space. If you have a lot of things already there, uh, what you start building amongst million other details it's it's difficult to see it last words <laughs> last last words <laughs> famous last words i i i hope you've had uh some good time yes good definitely. time <laughs> and insightful something that you know 
is interesting also and something coherent enough to, to put together. Yeah, yeah, surely. Uh, I mean, thank you very much so. for agreeing to this and for hosting me today. Uh, my pleasure. It's definitely. been wonderful. Now, I'm only waiting to, to hear everything you know, about your work because I really want to know. Obviously, I'm very interested in what you do as well. So, but we can do that over coffee, you know, another, and also without a camera if you, <laughs> if you want. I mean, this is your visit or now, so it should yes. be about you. Maybe I'm going to do a visit of, of my studio at some point. You definitely should. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. No, we definitely, you should, 